How's it going? Welcome back to a very special video today. I'm excited. We're going to be talking about Star Wars Outlaws. Is Star Wars Outlaws worth buying? Is Star Wars Outlaws worth it? Don't go anywhere because you'll want to watch this and find out. So let's go. Let's jump straight into this as the cool YouTubers say. The goddamn stupid idiots. <laughs> yes, we are a disgusting species. Uh, YouTubers. I'm going to break down all of the details. I've done extensive research into this game, finding out exactly what it is, why people are angry about it, what the sentiment is around this game, and the general discussion, okay? So I really do hope you like this. If you are interested at all in Star Wars Outlaws, this is the video to watch because it breaks down absolutely everything, and hopefully it will help you decide if Star Wars Outlaws is worth buying, if it's worth your money. So recently, I feel like Star Wars games have actually had a resurgence, okay? I actually enjoyed Star Wars Jedi Survivor. It was a great game. It reminded me a lot of the old school classic games like Jack and Daxter. It just give you a big world, a good story, little missions to go off and do, and exploration and combat in that game was good, I thought, apart from the performance issues. But also, we get a lot of this kind of Star Wars burnout. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. And that isn't surprising, because Star Wars has lost its magic, okay? I think we all know that. I don't need to go into a massive history lesson about why Star Wars has lost its magic. Disney greed appealing to certain countries over in the East because money talks and corruption walks. And yeah, Star Wars has just become a shadow of its former self. The movies destroyed the original franchise and I don't think it's ever gonna come back to what it was. But luckily we do get original games now and then like the Star Wars Jedi Survivor series um, because I thought that did a pretty good job of giving us a new story in the Star Wars universe, what I like about Star Wars. But that was made by a somewhat competent developer studio. This game is made by Ubisoft, and a lot of people have finally woken up to the fact that Ubisoft are not your friends. That's right, they want you to own nothing, and you will be happy about it. It's a trap. So finally, Ubisoft is getting the backlash it deserves. I've been saying this since basically Assassin's Creed 3 and the regurgitated Far Cries, but a lot of people seem to put up with it, but finally they've reached their breaking point, okay? Their broken point, is what I'm trying to say. It took a long time to get here, but at least we're finally here. We're all on the same page. Ubisoft, they don't make good quality games. They know how to regurgitate the content, repackage it, and sell it for a ridiculous price, and basically all of their games are the same, okay? It doesn't matter if it's Far Cry, doesn't matter if it's something like Assassin's Creed, which we knew Assassin's Creed, I'll talk about that in another video, but they're all basically the same. They have the same regurgitated formula design philosophy when it comes to open world games. They don't respect the player or the player's time. It's usually filled with a lot of, you know, filler content and basically lackluster stories or any form of impact or wait behind the story that they're trying to tell. And the gameplay follows the same trend. You know, you just go around some basic combat and you level up in some basic perk tree. It's pretty, pretty simple, to be honest. And then of course the map is littered with things to do, things to collect, stuff that you don't actually care about, nothing with actual sustenance. Finally, people have woken up to the fact that that type of game philosophy just isn't good. When we have games like Elden Ring, or Zelda Breath of the Wild, Organic worlds that actually make you feel like you're exploring, you know, that's what we want in an open world game And although Ubisoft are quite good at designing the open world, filling the content in that open world They just don't understand what we want it's a trap. So the reason why a lot of people are mad about Star Wars Outlaws is because First of all, they have DLC ready, actual finished content ready, but it's not included in the game. You know, normally when a game is finished, then they make DLC, okay, or while the game is wrapping up, you know, before they ship it. So it's not ready to ship to the main audience. That's how games used to be done. That's how it should be done. But now they actually have DLC ready, but they're just holding it off behind a paywall. It's like if I put all of my videos behind a paywall, okay, not just, you know, some exclusive content. And that's a good segue, because by the way, I have gone full time on YouTube, starting from today. This is the first official day of my full time YouTube career, which is very exciting, but very scary, because as you can probably see, I'm not a massive, massive channel, so I'm taking a big risk here. I left my job, which is probably pretty stupid, um, but I just couldn't take it anymore. Teaching in Japan is literally the stuff of nightmares. 
and I've decided to go full-time on YouTube. I have created a Patreon, and please go down to the Patreon and consider supporting me or dropping a thank you donation, because honestly, your support will either, you know, make or break if I can pay my rent. I'm not even joking. And I'm not trying to beg, you don't have to feel obliged to do it, but if you do, just know that you are so, so awesome and you mean so much to me and I will shout you out in the videos and yeah, just thank you so much for considering to support me. And if you're new to the channel anyway, please do subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot. It only takes two seconds of your time. Become a wise one. Join this fantastic community. I'm so, so, so passionate about what we're doing here. I love this community. I love how kind and wise we are. Become a wise one. If you like gaming content, yearly reviews, philosophical gaming content, looking at games with a more analytical approach, this is the channel for you. Subscribe. Another reason people are not happy with Star Wars Outlaws is simply because the pricing, okay? The pricing is pretty ridiculous for the deluxe edition where you basically get added nothing, okay? Just a few cosmetics and then you get access to this DLC which should be included in the base game like I just explained. This is like $130 which is absolutely insane. Just imagine holding content off that should be released as the main package, you know? Fair enough games have become broken and you know the AAA gaming industry has just lost its touch with sanity it seems because they release games in early access that aren't actually finished and then wait for it to be patched later there's a lot of issues with AAA gaming um luckily AA games are hopefully on the rise but you know this is just really scummy behavior and finally people have woken up to the fact that ubisoft don't care about you they aren't gamers okay they are people trying to monopolize on an IP, trying to make as much money as possible. They don't actually care about creativity. They don't care about innovating or pushing the gaming, you know, innovation forward. Okay, and that's what we should be doing as gamers. That's why we should support, you know, AA games, independent games, and uh, gaming creators who are actually caring and supporting this, you know, industry. Because that's the most important thing. Games are so unique, they have opportunities to tell us such unique stories and interact in a digital world that you can't do with any other media. And yeah, it's just sad, but Ubisoft, I'm glad it's finally on its downfall. <coughs> so now let's get in to the positives of this game before I do my Star Wars Outlaws review, okay? Before the Star Wars Outlaw reviews drop, I'm gonna try and do this new series because I'm gonna be uploading much more frequently, five days a week now where I look at a big game like Star Wars Outlaws and I do kind of a deep dive, like a, an analysis of Star Wars Outlaws before it's released, before I do the review, before I do the early access review. And the yearly reviews are the deep philosophical, analytical, you know, deep dive video essays of the games that I really care about. So I thought I would just highlight this, but I'm gonna do it in the same format because I think a lot of people like it if you are you know, a uh, fan of the channel. And I think the backlash is deserved, okay? Because Ubisoft are complete scum nowadays and their gameplay approach, design philosophy has been outdated for years, just like Rockstar. They need to innovate, they need to add new stuff. And we don't want this kind of artificial open world, you know, gameplay anymore. We don't like just going to a location and interacting with something. We want things to happen organically. We want to feel like the world is lived in. We want to explore and feel like we're actually being rewarded while we explore and exploring is organic. But at the same time, this game itself doesn't look terrible. This game could actually be good. Um, I have very, very low expectations because it is Ubisoft, but it's not full on the people who made Far Cry or Assassin's Creed, okay? This is the people who made Avatar, and that game was pretty mixed, I would say, um, but they still did innovate a little bit compared to other Ubisoft games, so there might be a little bit of hope here, maybe. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. I don't think the gameplay itself looks actually that bad, and it reminds me of games similar to Control, actually. So, the first thing that I wanted to highlight is the planet hopping, okay? I think that's a really cool idea, and they're t kind of taking a page out of Starfield's book, but they're actually improving upon it, okay? So, it looks to be much more, you know, of a smooth uh, transition from the planet to outer space, which I really like. Um, there's no loading screens by the looks of it, and that's a big, big positive, okay? I really 
I've always fantasized about a Star Wars open world game where you can, you know, planet hop and go to different cities on different planets. I don't know how big these locations are. I don't think it's going to be like Starfield where you can explore the whole procedural planet. It's going to be like hub mini open worlds. And then, you know, you land in that zone and then the main city is there. And then you can't actually explore outside that zone. But then you planet hop to another place. Kind of how Starfield should have been, maybe. Um, and I just like the fact that they're paying attention to the transition from, you know, atmosphere to outer space and stuff like that, which looks pretty good. I really like this idea of completing bounties and quests and, you know, jobs as a smuggler, as a, you know, outlaw in the Star Wars universe, you know, hopping around, completing these quests and just uh, completing them in your own way as well, which I really like. And having kind of dynamic gameplay by the looks of it with the wanted system, which I'll talk about more, that looks quite interesting. And I like how it's handled, you know, maybe you can, if the Empire's after you, for example, maybe you can hide out or defeat them on that planet, or you can escape into outer space and then, you know, shake them off. I just like that kind of emergent gameplay, which looks to be quite interesting, even though I'm very doubtful that the open world itself is interesting, but who knows. The next positive, and like I said, there's quite a few positives on this, because I do think this looks quite interesting, surprisingly. I'm just worried that it's going to follow the Ubisoft open world design approach, which I'm sure it will, but maybe they've actually learned from their mistakes. Maybe they're finally listening to criticism. Who knows? Um, we'll just have to see. But I like the fact that you can do space battles, okay? The space battles look to be very arcadey. They look to be, you know, pretty simplistic, not like you have to really, you know, shoot in front of the enemy before they get there or worry about, like, uh, um, you know, where your weapons are going to land or, you know, boost to shields or anything like that, you know, Something that Starfield did quite well, I think, was the space battles. But this looks to be more arcadey, but still, it's included. And the detail and the atmosphere of, um, you know, outside of planets, the surrounding um, planet area, looks to be quite detailed. We saw in the trailer and the gameplay here that um, there's a lot of, you know, debris, there's a lot of asteroid belts and stuff like that. So it makes for interesting space battles, um, which I like. Now, a negative, okay, one that made me worried about this game is so far the story, okay, and the writing. Now, what I love about open world games, and I don't think this is an RPG, they should have made it an RPG where you can customize your own character. That's what we want. A Star Wars open world game where you create your own character, it's a slight RPG, and you go off and do, you know, quests like this. That would be good, but they've tried to, you know, follow the approach of, okay, we're following a main story, this main character, and the main character doesn't look completely unlikable. She looks rather bland and uninteresting so far. Uh, kind of a little bit goofy, trying to be funny now and then, kind of like a female Han Solo, um, which I don't think really, um, yeah, is the best time to do something like that. And I think they should have given us an opportunity, like Cyberpunk, to go female or male but anyway. Um, the writing here looks to be rather, like, uh, generic, I'll say that. Um, when she's sitting down, talking with the Empire person and then her contractor, it just looks to be rather vanilla, and then the choices you get look to be very scripted and kind of one note, and perhaps they even lead to the same outcome, who knows, or just change a small thing like you're going to get a wanted level or you're not going to get a wanted level. Nothing really super exciting, I would say, but still, um, perhaps it gets better and perhaps you can have more dialogue choices later on, who knows. I do also like that you can explore the open world areas, these hub open world areas, on speeder bikes and stuff like that, that does look pretty cool to me, and, um, you know, that's just kind of reliving the Star Wars fantasy. This has the potential to be something really good. I just wish they gave you more customization here, because that would really sell it. Um, and like I said, it does remind me a lot of Control, because you have this, you know, kind of vanilla pistol, but you can add modules to it to make it a kind of different weapon, and I like the fact that they kind of went towards the slight realism approach, where you know, this is a little girl, pretty much. This is a woman, a whammon, okay? And whammon, most whammon, okay, can't hold big, big, big bazoongas, okay? They don't have the goddamn muscles. I like the fact that she can't actually, you know, pick up a massive machine gun and just wield it and carry it around with her. She can pick up a machine gun and then use it temporarily, which adds to a more dynamic gameplay. Um, and it makes more sense within the world, which I like. And then you have this little companion character, which you can use to distract enemies, you can uh, basically use this to get the weapon or to move things around in the environment. 
simple gameplay and it looks very traditional third person shooter gameplay but small elements which I think do look to be somewhat interesting. And a lot of people might give me backlash for praising this game. I'm not praising it, I'm just trying to be a little bit optimistic, okay? Because yes, Ubisoft sucks. This is not sponsored by Ubisoft, obviously. Um, but I'm saying the game doesn't look to be particularly dreadful at the moment. But they are very good at hiding their games and making it seem like um, it's much better than it actually is. I'm sure underneath it has the same Ubisoft packaging. That's what I'm worried about. But if it doesn't, this has the potential to be something unique. And the environment and the world detail looks to be quite lived in, which I do like. Going to these new worlds and having, you know, interaction in these Star Wars places. As a Star Wars fan, I think that is cool. You know, I don't really like Star Wars anymore, but I still have a special place and love for the universe and the old... Uh, movies and stuff like that so getting to see these places and exploring them in detail looks to be quite nice and I think that this game is going to feel rather open and it's not going to be like a jumbled puzzle like Starfield hopefully. I really hope they either nail the writing and the story or they go more of a you know RPG light route and really let you customize with abilities not percentage increases and clothings and stuff like that customize your ship all of that kind of stuff but it seems like they are focusing on a kind of linear story with, you know, side missions and quests that you can go on, um, kind of like The Witcher in some ways, but it just depends how good that writing is. This is supposed to be a gritty Star Wars game, and it doesn't look like it. It should be more adult, it should be more gritty and dark, I hope, but we'll just have to wait and see. And the final positive, which we'll talk about, is the Wanted System, okay? The Wanted System is such a cool idea. You know, we love that in games like Cyberpunk, we love it in games like GTA. Having a Star Wars Wanted System, we've never seen anything like that. You know, having the Empire hunt you, that is such a cool idea on paper. If they pull it off and they actually chase you like we saw in the gameplay from the planet into space, and you can have all of these different, you know, interactions with the Empire or perhaps, you know, uh, pay them off or just like, you know, hide out somewhere on the planet, smuggle yourself off world. That would be such a cool system. It just depends how they implement it. The fact that they're not including the DLC on release is very scummy. I don't think that this game will have a lot to say, you know, philosophically, so I'm not going to be doing a deep dive on it. It doesn't have much to say about the story or the universe itself. It doesn't really push the envelope forwards. Yes, this is canon if you care about that, but I don't think that this is really doing anything amazingly unique but it just depends if they actually learn from their mistakes, but I'm not hopeful. But from the small glimpse of gameplay that we have seen, it does look to be somewhat interesting, and maybe, potentially, if they innovate something good. So, is Star Wars Outlaws worth it? Should you buy Star Wars Outlaws? Is Star Wars Outlaws worth buying? I hope I answered those questions today. Obviously, that's down to you. At the end of the day but I will just say never 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 pre-order a game okay never pre-order games especially from Ubisoft this industry is massive now but it's become so massive that you know game gaming developers and gaming studios take so long to make their games they play it safe they don't innovate there's tons of microtransactions tons of BS ways to you know uh, market and fake market a game and fake advertise what the game actually is going to be, early access. There's tons of stuff wrong with the gaming industry right now, but there's also new and innovative and interesting games coming out. Um, so with Ubisoft, it's definitely worth playing it safe and not to give them a pre-order, never do that anyway, but definitely wait for this and wait until the reviews and the deep dives looks at the game. I think, you know, the Star Wars Outlaws reviews will probably be a lot of people being paid off as well. We've already seen that. So, um, I think unless if this game does something different, then it definitely won't be. No matter how much you dress it up with a unique coat of paint, if it's the same Ubisoft game underneath, no one's going to be interested, I think. And I'm glad, finally, people are fighting against that type of game design, because we could get so much more out of games and the media if we do that. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video if you did stick around until the end of the video. Like I said, please do subscribe if you are new and if you are already an existing wise one, support me on Patreon. I would really support it or drop a donation to help me keep doing this. I'm also starting live streaming every single day um, from 9 a.m. to 12 uh, Japanese time. So do join the live streams. We're building up a great community there. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.